Hello, welcome to another research review. I'm Dr. Jason Saunders with HBOT USA. Today we're going to be talking about hyperbaric oxygen as it relates to CP or cerebral palsy. So cerebral palsy is described as some type of brain trauma, usually ischemic brain trauma, meaning a period of time without proper blood flow or proper oxygenation to the brain. And this, this trauma or this injury sometimes occurs in utero, sometimes may occur during the delivery process or can occur shortly after the delivery itself. The thing with CP is that uh, the severity of the symptoms is directly related to the severity of the ischemic incident and the symptoms that a, that a child may uh, show are directly related to the area of the brain that was impacted. And so really with CP, you know, the symptoms in the cases are literally as varied as the children themselves. So just like with so many other uh, brain injuries like stroke or TBI and concussion, hyperbaric oxygen plays a critical role in helping brain tissue heal. It does that a few different ways. One, it helps to reduce inflammation in the area. Two, it helps to stimulate stem cells, which will um, basically help the nerve tissue or the brain tissue regenerate. It's also going to help improve angiogenesis, which is, you know, regrowing blood vessels. So many times with these brain injuries, there's loss of oxygen due to trauma to the circulatory system. And one of the major benefits of hyperbaric oxygen is literally regrowing blood vessels so that we could deliver that high level of oxygen back to the brain. And so between reducing inflammation, stimulating stem cells, rebuilding the microcirculation or the capillary network that feeds the brain, hyperbaric oxygen plays a huge role in what's called neuroplasticity or literally regrowing and reconnecting uh, brain cells together to improve function. So of course, just like these other conditions that we've done videos on before, CP follows a very similar uh, root in terms of how hyperbaric oxygen may benefit. I will include a few links to a handful of studies on hyperbaric oxygen uh, as it relates to cerebral palsy, but I do want to talk about one study in particular. It was a study done in 2014. Uh, Mukherjee was the uh, chief investigator. So in this study, and one of the interesting things about this study is they didn't just look at one pressure. They looked at multiple uh, pressure uh, groups. So a lot of times people ask me, well, hey, would a soft chamber help with this? Or does it have to be a hard chamber? Can it be mild pressure? Or does it have to be high pressure? And so that's why I want to talk about this study particularly. So in this study, there were 150 children. They were broken into four groups, uh, a control group, and then they had a 1.3, 100% oxygen, uh, a 1.5, and a 1.75. Uh, all different pressures for all these different groups. They were then, uh, they were assessed before the study began at two months, four months, six months, and eight months. And they were using subjective questionnaires as well as uh, gross motor function tests. And so the interesting thing about this was the control group didn't get any pressure or oxygen. The control group did a, a, a typical series of PT and OT therapy. Uh, the other groups got hyperbaric oxygen in varying pressures along with their typical approach to PT and OT. And so with all three groups of hyperbaric oxygen, all three of those groups uh, showed dramatic improvement. Uh, and the interesting thing was, is that there wasn't, there was some difference between the 1.3 and the 1.5 and the 1.5 and the 1.75. However, this, the distance between, or the, the statistical difference between those three groups was actually pretty minimal. Yet all three of those groups had a very significant improvement above the control group. So it absolutely showed that with increased pressure and increased oxygen, we absolutely show a decrease in symptoms and an increase in function in these children. And it didn't seem to matter that much in terms of which pressure level was used. The 1.3, the 1.5, and the 1.75 all had a very similar result um, when compared to each other and a very dramatic improvement when compared to the control group. So like I said, I will include some links to some other studies as well. There's a tremendous amount of promise for using hyperbaric oxygen with CP. And uh, we do this in our clinic all the time and we see very great results also. So thanks again and see you next time.